What's up guys, Eddie here as DJ11 from J8 Music Studios. Today we're looking at the basics of compression. First we're going to break down the basic components of compression. Then we're going to look at some of the basic reasons why you might need to apply compression in your mix. Then we're going to take a careful look at how the parameters inside of a compressor may affect your signal either for better or for worse. See the time codes in the description below if you want to skip ahead. And if you do feel the need to skip ahead, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button so you don't miss any of the dance music production content coming from Jade's Music Studios. Let's get to it. Guys, if you're looking for some one-on-one -on -one tuition to sharpen your production skills, hit me up at jmusicstudios at gmail.com. We can have a free 30 minute consultation to see what it is you need to take your productions to the next level. Back to the technique. So we're gonna use FabFilter Pro C2 for this demonstration. It is a very clear and concise compressor. That's easy to understand and has a good graphical interface as well. So what is a compressor? So a compressor is a processor that reduces the dynamic range of a signal by compressing from the top down. If I play a signal. Compresses from the top down. And what is the dynamic range? If I play a signal uh, through the BX meter, you gotta see that the dynamic range is the distance in decibels between the highest peaks of a signal and the lowest peaks of a signal. The average referred to generally as the RMS, being the root mean squared. You see in this signal, we currently have a dynamic range of approximately four and a half to five and a half decibels, and this does, this does fluctuate quite rapidly. So if I engage the compressor and I compress from the top down, you can hear the overall gain being reduced you also see the dynamic range being reduced from about four and a half to five to three and a half to four. And if I want to increase the amount of compression occurring, I can either reduce the threshold or increase the ratio. So this is extreme compression, 10 to one. This is almost limiting. And we can see that the dynamic range has further decreased from three and a half to four down to about two and a half. And it's also a lot more consistent. So the main controls you'll find on most compressors are the threshold, the ratio, the attack, release, and the makeup gain. Threshold is the first parameter we'll tackle. Threshold determines at what decibel level the compressor will engage the signal. So here the compressor is doing absolutely nothing. Once I lower the threshold, you can see that the compressor is starting to be engaged. The ratio determines how aggressively the signal is compressed once the threshold has been breached. The higher the ratio, the more aggressive the compression, and the lower the ratio, the less aggressive and more gentle the compression will be. Now that doesn't make a whole lot of sense if you don't know anything about compression, but let's just bear with me for the time being. The attack and release are the envelope of the compressor and they determine over what period of time the compressor will engage the incoming signal. A very fast attack means it will engage almost straight away and this will squash the transient information of the signal. And if I lengthen the attack, the transient information will be allowed through the compressor. If the attack is too fast for the signal, it will impart a distortion on the compressor, and this may be desired and it may not be desired. It depends on the context in which you are compressing. The release determines how the compressor behaves after the compressor has finished imparting its compression on the signal. If it is quick, the compression will stop almost straight away, and if it is extremely long, the compressor will continuously engage compressing the signal through this decibel level determined by the threshold. If the release is too short, it will also impart distortion on the signal. And this also may be desirable or it may be undesirable. The last common control found on most compressors is the makeup gain. In Pro C2, it's referred to as the wet gain, wet being the processed signal. The purpose of the makeup gain is to equalize the gain level coming out of the processor. As people, we always like to, we always think that whatever's louder is better. Therefore, if we decrease or increase the gain due to compression, whatever's louder will sound better to us. So we equalize the gain so we can listen to what the compressor is actually doing to the signal without having a bias towards the loudness of that process signal. So why would we need such a processor? Well, if you're recording real world vocals, synthesizers or analog instruments, and you think the signal is going to clip the audio interface, you need to apply compression. If you're dealing with an audio signal that has a very high dynamic range and some of the signal is being lost behind the mix and you don't want that, you need to apply compression. If you want to alter the tonal content of a signal, you can do this via compression. And certainly the most used context in dance music 
If you want to increase the intensity of a signal by increasing the density of that signal, you apply compression. This is the most abused processor in dance music, especially trance with everything so in your face. The tricky part about explaining a compressor is that all the parameters act together. If I reduce the threshold, I will start to impart compression. If I increase the ratio, I will impart more compression. If I increase the length of the attack, that will alter the behavior of the compressor in that the compressor will have a slower action and the initial transient information of that signal will be let through before compressing. If I increase the release parameter, it might sound more natural, but it will reduce the overall volume of that signal, in which case you'll have to make up more makeup gain. Another side effect of increasing the release is that your signal will have more body. So if you want to accentuate the body of a signal, you have a longer release time. If you want to reduce the body information of a signal and maybe increase the transient information, you'll have a longer attack and a shorter release. I'm going to mono my percussion for this track. I'm going to loop it around and just alter some of the parameters to describe how they function and how they relate to each other. I'm going to start with a very low threshold so the compressor is not engaged, a ratio of two to one, the attack as fast as possible, the release as fast as possible. As I loop this drum loop, listen what happens to the loop after I engage the compressor. As I turn that on and off, you can hear how the body of the clap becomes much louder. What happens if I increase the ratio? You can hear as I increase the ratio that the amount of compression occurring increases if I just toggle it on and off. So that is some extreme compression happening. I'm just going to reset that to two to one. Now I'm going to lower the threshold so the compressor is being engaged and I'm going to adjust the attack and release times and just listen to what happens to the signal. As I increase the attack time, you can hear how the the transient information of the drum loop is maintained and the overall compression is reduced. If you keep an eye on the scale to the right as I increase and then decrease the attack time. As I increase the attack, the amount of compression occurring actually reduces. If I still wanted to compress the drum loop to negative three decibels, I would have to lower the threshold or increase the ratio. Now what happens if I lengthen the release? So you can hear as I lengthen the release of the compressor, the compression doesn't actually disengage before the other signals start to be processed. So the compressor is always compressing once it's initially engaged by the first signal. If I just toggle that on and off. Now there's an infinite way you can set these parameters up and they all affect each other. For example, if I shorten the attack on this drum loop, but keep the release quite long, you'll hear how the transient information is reduced and the percussion will, sent, will be sent to the back of the mix if it was playing in a full mix.
Now that's some fairly extreme compression and not really practical, but I hope you can hear how these two relate to each other. Furthermore, if I keep that out to about say 30 milliseconds, that's a common, common length, I'll shorten this to about 90 milliseconds. I'll reduce the compression and the ratio. So that is actually some nice compression occurring on that drum loop right there. But when it comes to learning compression, just remember a few things. When it comes to mixing your tracks, the more contrast you have between your elements, the better. And if everything is compressed, then you will lose contrast between your elements. Secondly, a compressor can be used to shape transient information or accentuate transient information or take away transient information. If you want to accentuate the transient, you lengthen the attack. If you want to diminish the transient, you shorten the attack. If you want to increase the body of a sound, you increase the release, shorten the attack. If you want to decrease the body of a sound, increase the attack and shorten the release. Shorten the attack to as short as possible to achieve the transient information that you desire, uh, but not so short that it imparts distortion on the signal. And the release, have it as long as possible so it imparts the transient and body information you desire but not so short that it imparts additional distortion on that signal. The transient is the most important part of our sound. So if you do engage a compressor, make sure you do it as gentle as possible. Once you've shaped your envelopes and you've set your compressor in context with the rest of the mix, if you feel you need more compression, you can increase the ratio until you hear the amount of compression required for this mix. One more thing, before you engage compression, decide exactly what you want to get from this compressor before you start applying your settings. A lot of amateur producers just go to presets and that really makes no sense because applying compression is all about the contrasting information in your specific mix. And when FabFilter made these presets, they didn't have your mix. One more thing to consider guys is that if you have to do lots and lots of compression, it is better to do it with more than one compressor or maybe in a parallel configuration. But parallel compression will be for a different video. So thanks very much guys. I hope you've got something from this video. This is the basics of compression. Uh, don't be afraid to watch it multiple times if you need to further your understandings of a compressor, how a compressor behaves, and how to actually apply it. And remember that this is the most abused, overused processor in dance music. As far as I'm concerned, the less compression you can apply, the better your mix will be. If you got something from this content, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button so you don't miss any of the dance music production content coming from J8 Music Studios. And if you're looking for some one-on-one -on -one tuition to sharpen up your production skills, hit me up at j8musicstudios at gmail.com. Link in the description. Happy music making, and I'll see you in the next one.